Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the United Congregational Church of Holyoke. I'm very happy to see you here, and I welcome those who are watching online as well. Before we begin, are there any announcements? Oh, before you give the announcements, there is no handheld microphone, so if you have an announcement, please come to the second podium and give it from there. No announcements this morning? Well, I do have one. In the reading of the scripture, I'm going to be doing the scripture reading for the gospel, and I'm going to do it during my sermon. So we're going to, there will be like a little interruption after the Old Testament readings, and then I'll, I'll read mine before I begin my sermon. Um, if you're able, please stand with me in body and spirit. Listen to the words from the call to worship. God is with us. His hand remains with us. God's love is steadfast. His strength is enough. We can rest in God's presence. God's love keeps His covenant from generation to generation and establishes our future. God's love is steadfast. His strength is enough. We can rest in God's presence. His mercy never fails. His grace sustains us every day. God's love is steadfast. His strength is enough. We can rest in God's presence. In times of joy and sorrow, His love endures forever. God's love is steadfast. His strength is enough. We can rest in God's presence. Let us worship God together and praise His holy name. God's steadfast. Love is steadfast. His strength is enough. We can rest in God's presence. Amen. Wonderful Creator, you come to us with the majesty of power and the tenderness of gentleness, with the might of strength and the embrace of compassion, with the serenity of peace and the vitality of joy. We come before you carrying hope and hopelessness, love and heartback, thanksgiving and lament. In your boundless mercy, you fortify us for the journey ahead, assuring us of your constant presence and renewing us with your unfailing love. As we gather in your holy name, grant us rest in our coming and going, and let your joy overflow in our hearts as we minister in your name. May our worship today restore our souls, refresh our spirits, and draw us closer to you. As we dwell in your presence, may we be transformed by your grace and inspired by your everlasting love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us praise this morning with the uh, song, The King of My Love, My Shepherd Is.
You may be seated. Holy God, we confess that our life keeps us consumed more with doing than with being. We trust in the chariots and horses of our times, our tools, schemes, and positions. We acknowledge that you call us to rest in your truth, love, and peace without abdicating our responsibility to embody our good news. We struggle to balance the rhythms of rest and renewal in our lives and seek your guidance and direction towards a life where you are peace, hope, and standard. Guide us on this path. Beloved, you do not journey alone. In a community with God and one another, we find grace, strength to heed the call of to discipleship. In Christ, we carry the good news, reflect a good near a God near us, faithful to redeem and affirm our rest and renewal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us be ready for the reading of the scripture. Good morning. Our first reading is from Psalm 14. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand who seek after God. They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is none who does good, not even one. Have they no knowledge, all the evildoers, who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord? There they are in great terror, for God is with the generation of the righteous. You would shame the plans of the poor, but the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, let Jacob rejoice, let Israel be glad. The Old Testament reading is taken from uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 14. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But the same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pastor, pasture, from following the sheep to being prince over all my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. 
and I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I have appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come from forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Thus ends the reading of the Old Testament. Good morning. I'm very happy to be here this morning. The title of my sermon today is Shepherding with God's Heart. And I will read from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 to 30 to, 30 to 44. The disciples met with Jesus and reported everything they had done and taught to him. He told them, Let us separate from others in a solitary place and rest a little, because many people came and went, and the disciple needed more eating time. They went in the boat to a lonely, secluded place, but people saw them and recognized them. Then people from all the cities ran and came to where they were. When they had landed, Jesus saw a great crowd, but he had compassion unto them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Then he began to teach them and to speak to them. When the evening came, his disciples came to him, saying, The place is deserted, and it is already very late. Send them away so they can go to the surrounded fields and villages and buy something to eat. But he answered them, You feed them. They replied to him, Do you want us to go and buy 200 denarii of bread and feed them? Jesus told them, Go and look for now for how many loaves you have. When they made sure, they told him five loaves of bread and two fish. He ordered them to all sit in groups on the green grass. And they sat down in groups of 100 and others in groups of 50. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed them. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to serve. He also divided the two fish among everyone. They all ate and were satisfied. They picked up 12 baskets baskets full of pieces of bread and fish. Those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. Dear God, let the thoughts and the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you this morning. My God, my love in whom I trust. Amen. The two fish and the five loaves story, it is uh, one one beautiful story in the Bible. It is one of the very little stories that is in all the four Gospels. But it is the only miracle that happens in the four Gospels. Now, some Bible nerds, people who enjoy the Bible a lot, might say, what about Jesus walking on water? Luke did not talk about Jesus walking on water, so there you go. This story is significant because it details an aspect of Jesus and God's character. Jesus wanted people to eat. What was happening? Well, Jesus is preaching, he wants to go to a a solitary place, and when he gets there, there's more people there waiting for him. People were literally chasing after him. They spend the whole day listening to him. 
And let me mention, I think I mentioned this few weeks ago, there was no TV, no iPhones, no iPads, no phones whatsoever, no computers, no internet, no Facebook, no, no TV shows, there was no newspaper, there was no printed paper and ink. They knew, they knew of Jesus because they all talked about him. And people came and went looking for Jesus everywhere he went. They ran out of their houses. They came on food from all the cities. They spent the whole day listening to him. And they didn't realize it was time to go home and feed themselves and feed their family. And now they're getting hungry. And I don't know about you, but the last time the people were gathered following a Messiah figure in a deserted area and got hungry, things got a little ugly. So before that happened, um, the disciples came to Jesus and was like, Hey, Jesus, we need to let these people go. Jesus wanted them to eat. And that's who he was. That's who he is. He did not only care for their being spiritually, but he also cared for the little things that might sometimes seem a little mundane to us. That is compassion. Compassion does not have to be this per big thing that moves you to feed 5,000. Compassion cares for you if you are just hungry. We are all capable of having compassion. You are very capable of having compassion. I am capable of having compassion. Sometimes I don't have enough. But compassion is a characteristic of the human being that I believe comes directly from God. We are all God's image and likeness. Therefore, we resemble God's spirituality, physicality, intellectuality, and emotionally, we are like God. Those we all can develop the same feelings and emotions that God has towards others. And in Mark there, Mark 6 verse 34 says that when they landed, Jesus saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. We all experience hardship, headaches and heartaches in life. I was reading a book by a pastor many years ago and he said that when people find themselves in people find themselves in four different places at all times in one of four places at any time in life he said and I quote you're either going towards a difficult time you're going through a difficult time you're coming out of a difficult time or you are be between difficult times but being human is directly related to being to dealing with difficult times. I say sometimes suffering is inevitable. And we must understand that just as we go through difficult times in life, our neighbors, our friends, our family members, our co-workers, our loved ones, our acquaintances, our enemies, and even strangers go through difficult times. When we interact with them, we witness how they go through their difficulties. Many of us have two types of feelings towards the people around us. Many of us feel sympathy towards them. And sympathy is like we like them, we want to be like with them, we want to spend time with them, but many of us think apathetically towards others. Apathy is what we feel when we dislike someone. We avoid them. And it doesn't matter if we have apathy or sympathy for the person. When someone goes through a difficult time, we all can have empathy. Empathy is the ability to understand what someone is going through. And usually one thing, uh, one thinks about how we, feel, how we will feel in the same situation. And what does, why does this have to do with compassion? Compassion was, goes a step further. It can help us understand what someone else is going through. And it can also help us know the pain, the frustration, the fear, and the desperation of the person is going through at that difficult moment. But it also moves us to act in favor of that person. 
Compassion makes us understand pain. It makes us feel the pain, but it more. Compassion moves us to do something about the pain. Apostle Paul calls this laugh with those who laugh and cry with those who cry. We all la love to laugh with those to la who laugh. I am usually a happy person. I enjoy laughing with those who are laughing. Though yeah, last night I went to a birthday party and there were some 20 something kids and they were having fun. And one lady that's about my age, I assume she's in her 40s. I don't want to assume, but let's call, let's say she's in her early 30s. Um, she looks at me and tells me, do you remember when you were in your 20s? I looked at her and said, no, no, I thought I did, but today I realize I don't anymore. We all love to laugh with those who laugh. We all like to celebrate. We all like to party. We all want to have a good time. But it is also vital for us to cry with those who are crying. We can leave them alone. One day, we too will go in through a moment of pain. And we do not want to be alone. Sometimes I feel very identified with someone who loses their dad. My dad passed away about 14 years ago. And I had a very good relationship with him. After many years of struggle, I finally had a good relationship with him. And I remember being with him weeks before he passed away. And I was just sobbing next to him in bed. I had longer hair back then. I don't know if you believe it, but I did have longer hair. And, and I had a long beard too. I looked like, like the guys from the Duck Hunters that was on TV, but a brown version. I used to have a very, very easy times in airports. I'm being sarcastic. Um, anyways, um, I was there. Do you remember? Do you know what were my, my father's last words to me? You need to cut your hair. My last words to my dad were, you need to listen to your doctor. Even thinking about it, I feel moved. But many years ago, when I was still married, a friend of my kid's mother and her husband stayed with us for a few days. And the husband of this lady and I, we didn't like each other. And when I don't like someone, sometimes I pretend, but I couldn't pretend with him. But his father had died a year before. We were in the backyard having some grilled food. And my ex-wife and her friend walked into the kitchen and there I am with a man that I don't like and he doesn't like me and we, we know we don't like each other. So I asked him, how are you doing after your dad passed? And he started talking. I asked him about his siblings, about his mother. For 40 minutes to an hour we were there talking alone. And he talked to me like we, are, we were friends. After a couple of days, they left. And my ex told me that while I, he and I were talking about the death of his father, his wife and her were crying in the kitchen. Because for a whole year, he had not talked to anyone about it. Then she asked me, Nathan, I thought you didn't like him. And I was like, I don't, I still don't like him today. But even I can have compassion. God has compassion for us. Therefore, we can see that when we love God and God love ourselves, we can treat others the way God has treated us. This is the main subject of this story. That God is our shepherd because he has compassion. We can focus in the actual miracle of the food. 
We can talk about how Jesus told the disciples, no, you feed them because it was their job to feed the people and it was his job to do the miracle and how that applies to our lives. We can talk about how the food multiplied from two fish and five loaves that fed 2,000, I'm sorry, 5,000 men without counting women and children. But the reality is that without compassion in the heart, none of this story will have happened. We can be here. We are a church of compassion. We can be people of compassion. And I tell you, do you know why I know we are a church of compassion? Because in the two months that I've been here, I have heard so many stories of a small church, of a big church, good things, bad things, many pastors coming through it. But one thing has remained with every person I've talked in the last two months. And it is that, what do you like the most about this church? And they tell me, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 5 years ago, 2 weeks ago, 50 years ago, we were a church who cared about feeding those who are hungry. That is the true heart of God. Amen. Before we move on to, to praise, one more. I want to do a prayer. If you bow your heads with me, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the example of what to do. We can preach. We can teach and we can feed others. But it is the heart full of compassion what really touches the lives of the people, what can change their stories from darkness into light, and what can help us fight hate with the love of Christ. Amen. Let us praise the Lord one more time with the hymn, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us.
now it's t uh, time for sharing time our joys and concerns and I just want to make before we do that I had forgot a couple of announcements I want us to welcome our um, uh, Kavan Rambukwela here who's our guest musician today um, and also uh, we have finally found a qualified candidate for the custodian position Dan Tracy will be starting on Monday July 22nd 2024 and also be on the lookout in your email for the pastor's weekly reflection um, does anybody have any prayers or concerns they want to voice I can repeat them up here or if you can come up with So prayers for prayers for Karen and her family. Let this be our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. Anybody else? Ed? Let this be our prayer. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Anybody else? Paul again? <laughs> Let this be our prayer. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. Anybody else? Okay. Oh. Oh, um, Myra? Yes. Pr prayers. Yes. Okay. Prayers for hope for our country. Let this be our prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. prayers. Lisa. Okay, so prayer for, prayers of joy for uh, Tim and his family. Let this be our prayer. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Anybody else? Okay. Let us join for a moment of silent reflection. Let us get to get, gather together and pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us how to pray. And we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today this daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who, who, are, in, ah, who are in debt to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. I get confused sometimes with trespasses and debts, so forgive me for that. And I just threw thy papers. All right. Let us get ready for our offertory this morning. And let me remind you, there will be today a second offering, and this one will be for Rebecca's closet. I want to thank you. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you for sharing your gifts with the ministry of the United Congregational Church of Holyoke. Your gift makes an incredible difference in the communities that we serve. A faithful life reflects a spirit of generosity from trusting God who provides and replenishes our resources. God's creation is abundant and so all the needs will be met when we share the gifts we have been given. Let our giving reflect our gratitude and commitment to our beloved community. Generous God, we give you these gifts to you through this faithful community. May you lead and guide us with discernment so that our ministry will provide your, you with glory, honor your name, and benefit your creation. Amen. Let us praise the Lord one more time with the hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King.
May the Lord guide you, restore your soul, and lead you. May you embody his love and care as you go forth, shepherding those around you with a heart like his. May his goodness and mercy become your actions, and may you dwell in God's presence this day permanent and permanently. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.